Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock until 2.30 at the Think Tech Studios in the Pioneer Plaza in beautiful downtown Honolulu. We have a great technical staff here today uh, and we also have a, a very interesting guest who comes with a variety of experience. We've got Darren Matsuda who is formerly an attorney and has got some good legal background but decided to become an insurance broker particularly in the commercial markets uh, here in Hawaii. And so he's going to be sharing with us today some of the nuances of commercial insurance and some of the do's and the don'ts. Darren, welcome to the show. Hi, hi Reg. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, now, you, you uh, came to Hawaii quite a while ago, but originally you're from Northern California? Yes, I uh, came over in 1999. I, I was recruited out of, uh, out of law school to come, in, come over to Hawaii. And who recruited you? Uh, the law firm Bayes, Deaver, Lung, and Rose. Yeah, good firm then. Yeah, yeah, very good firm. And what did you do with them? I was a commercial litigation uh, attorney. I did a lot of insurance, uh, business construction, and employment law for a number of years. So you worked on the insurance side of things from a legal perspective before you decided to jump to the other side. Correct. And how long did you do that? Uh, I did that for about eight years. And so what did you learn during that process of eight years of working the other side of the fence, so to speak? Well, you know, being an attorney is, uh, is a lot of work. I learned a lot of um, things about contracts, learned a lot of things about negotiation, negotiation skills, um, and, and the practice of law. And some of the do's and don'ts of insurance too, right? Yes, yeah. definitely. That's good. So you learned how to defend, I guess, some of the, the or go after the insurance companies in a sense. Were you, were you supporting the insurance companies or were you going after the insurance companies? Well, often uh, we worked for insurance companies, so often I did some coverage council work. Um, sometimes, you know, we did go after insurance companies on the other side, and so it was both sides of the fence. All right, well, but that's great training. That, yes, that's correct. That's a great way to learn the industry. Correct. All right, and then after eight years of doing that, you decided to jump to the other side and, and start your own insurance business. Yes, I did. Um, about 10 years ago, uh, I had a an opportunity to, to go into insurance and uh, and change my lifestyle a little bit and I decided to do that. Mm. Was that the primary reason to, you know, lifestyle change or was it something about the industry that got you passionate? Yeah, you know, part of it was lifestyle change, um, a little bit more time and, and you know, I, I saw that some of the skills you have as an attorney could definitely translate over to the insurance business and so I thought it was a good, uh, a good background to take with me. Very good. And then, uh, and so now you're working in your own business uh, with a bunch of other people, or are you somewhat independent, or how does Correct. that work? Correct. Well, I'm an insurance, uh, independent insurance broker with the, uh, the insurance firm uh, ACW Group. Okay. And what do you do there? Well, I have my own book of business, but I, I usually am the representative of certain businesses on, the, on their insurance needs. So I service their insurance, I, I make placements for them, um, I take care of their accounts. Right. And, you know, just full disclosure, you also cover my insurance yes. <laughs> needs. And so that's how, you know, and we, well, actually, we started, we got introduced to each other back in uh, my old HMAA days, right? Correct. Right. And so you handle some big companies. I mean, HMAA is one. I know that personally because I was there working with you on it. Uh, so you've got some very large companies, and you also have, in my case, some very small companies. Yes, I, I, it's the full spectrum. I work with both small businesses and, and big businesses in Hawaii. That's good. And which ones do you prefer? <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny. All small businesses and big businesses, they have a lot of similarities. There's some differences, but, you know, I like working with people. And, and that's, the, that's the biggest that's thing. It's important when right. you're in that kind of business, right? Because Correct. it's all about the, the relationships you build with the people. We're correct. Right. And you work uh, not only the property and casualty, but you're also, you get involved in health care insurance a little bit too? And yeah, so I do the property and casualty, professional liability, um, and I also do uh, employee benefits, workers' comp, TDI, uh, medical. Very good. So it's a pretty broad spectrum. Yeah. Um, no life? Uh, it's, occasionally I'll do some life, you know, especially key man insurance for some businesses that need that. Um, more, you know, what we try to do is we try to do the whole gamut, some bonding. If well, mm -hmm. we do a lot of construction companies that have some bonding needs, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. You know, hopefully we take care of all the insurance needs that a client will have. 
Right, and, that, well, and that's full service. I mean, it sounds like you've got all the different lines that anybody would ever need. Yes, so we're licensed, or I'm licensed in, in all, all aspects of insurance. That's very good. Um, and I guess, is this a growing industry? Or I guess if business is growing, mm -hmm. the number of businesses don't necessarily grow. So, I mean, we're, what's the state of the insurance business right now? Is it an opportunity? Is it growing? Or, or what's, what's the, the status? Well, I think it is. I mean, there's, there's opportunity and there's always new businesses coming up. And in addition to that, there's, there may be uh, people that aren't happy with their current situation. So you're always looking to grow your business, um, which, we've, which I've done pretty successfully over the years. Very good. And I guess, uh, you know, when you first get into a new client, you don't necessarily have all of their insurance needs. You kind of go in and start helping them maybe in one area, and then you just kind of grow and expand into other areas. So, Correct. You know, and that's where that relationship building becomes so important. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess um, I've also heard of, uh, you know, insurance reviews, uh -huh. you know, where I guess someone will come in and take a look at the, 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 all the insurance that a company might have and then provide some feedback. Um, you know, as a professional in that area, define what that is. Maybe walk us through how that works. Well, usually I, I might get an opportunity either uh, from someone calling me or someone being referred to me or myself reaching out to a uh, business. And uh, insurance review usually for me is getting to know the client first, really understanding what a client does, what kind of business they do, um, and, the, and the types of risks that they face in their everyday business. And after we do that, we kind of, we try to look at what they have, they currently have, what their current coverage is, and whether they're covered correctly. Um, and then, you know, really try to pitch or tell them what we can provide to them. You know, I have a unique background. Uh, my background uh, can help them become a part of their business team. And that's what I see myself as, not just an insurance agent who just makes maybe places insurance, but a person who's really a part of your business team. Um, for, for example, if a company is entering a contract, most contracts have insurance requirements. Mm -hmm. And before they enter that contract, I want to be a part of that so I can advise that client whether you know some of the requirements they, they may have as a part of that contract are either um, too egregious or too overbearing or if it's cost effective and most of the time if you do that before you enter a contract those terms are negotiable exactly so if they are a little over the top you're in a position to kind of push back a little bit and you know and, and maybe satisfy their needs but with, in a different way correct and and a lot of times you know most of the most of the contracts are written by attorneys and m many attorneys may not understand the current insurance market and sometimes uh, an attorney's job is to make sure their client is protected as, as best as they can, but sometimes that protection can be a little bit cost, uh, cost prohibitive for the client. Yeah, well, in some of these contracts, uh, is it always very clear what the insurance requirements are, or sometimes does it uh, take a little digging to find out? Well, a lot of it may be what I call insurance lingo. So someone who may not be in the insurance business aren't, isn't gonna understand what certain uh, coverages are that, that they, they may require. And sometimes some of the requirements are out of date. Uh, the insurance forms change mm -hmm. periodically. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's impossible to meet some of those contractual requirements. So it's good that if we're involved from the beginning, we can go through that with you. And so we're not, you're, you're not getting into a contract where you might be in breach of because you, there's a, no way for you to um, make, meet those requirements. That's an interesting point. So I guess some of the terminology could be a little bit stale. Yes. Um, and I guess the insurance industry tends to be a, a, a constantly moving and changing type of industry. You know, there's, there's all kinds of risks that are out there, and they tend to change uh, fairly often. And I guess with some of the litigation that takes place, it changes, I guess, the nature of some of the coverage. Correct. And so if they're not updating these standard contract forms, um, there could be something in there that either doesn't make any sense or maybe over the top or maybe need to be added. Right, right. So, and that's part of what you can assist people with is taking a look at this and identifying it. Yeah. Yeah, and then and offer solutions. Yeah, and that's, that's what we like to do. I mean, we want to be a part of your team as you're just like your accountant or your, your attorney. Um, we want to be viewed at, by the client and uh, be, be in regular conversations with you to help you do the best you can in your business. Uh, and well, and that that's both protecting what you've got, but also 
addressing the needs, but maybe keeping it cost effective. Exactly. So there's, um, and part of the insurance review is to make sure, you know, to identify these areas of opportunity. Mm -hmm. How long does a, an insurance review usually take? I mean, if somebody wanted to ask, I know it depends upon the size of the company, right. and contracts and all that, but generally for a, a medium-sized business, it's, uh, you know, I got maybe 10 or 20 employees, it's uh, less than a million in sales. Um, how long do you think it takes to do an insurance review? Well, for us, it may take, you know, a while because we, if we look at your policies, we like to look, go, go ahead and go through them and see what you currently have and, and really get to know you. Face-to-face uh, -face time, it may take, you know, just a meeting because we would just want to interview you and have you have a chance to interview us or interview myself to see what I, what I can bring to the table. And I want to figure out what, um, what, what relevant insurance is or what relevant coverages will pertain to you or your company. Right, and I would assume that if somebody had all this documentation there, you know, you have a cup of coffee, spend a little bit of time, but you could probably get something done in, in four or five hours, six hours, or more? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, usually for our face-to-face -face meeting, maybe half an hour to an hour, you know, I, I, I do some background research too. Most, most businesses have websites, and I like to really look at the website and, you know, get to know that business. Right, so you vet it a little bit. And Correct. You, you do your research. Uh, so you come in a little bit prepared, mm -hmm. you know, and I know in, in my case when uh, I decided to, you know, change insurance carriers on a professional liability insurance basis, um, I believe you were able to get more insurance for about 20% or so less. Mm -hmm. So it worked out as a sweet deal for me. And, and I'd like to think that there may be other opportunities like that, and that's one of the reasons why I've got you on the show is that you know, there's, you know, to come in and do this insurance review, take a look at what the, the needs are, mm -hmm. try to find some of the pukas maybe, you know, and address those. But you could end up getting a better insurance coverage package uh, for at least no more than, or maybe even in some cases less than what you're currently paying. And, and often that's the case because there are a lot of markets. And there's a lot of competition between the insurance companies for a particular client or an account. Uh, depending on the client and depending on the loss history or their claim history, but most often there's going to be some competition out there um, where insurance companies may compete over a different account. Uh, a lot of times it's how you uh, portray the story to the carrier of what this client is about, and that's why the review process is really getting to know about you as the client or you as the business. Okay, well, let's, you know, I, I want to just continue on this uh, topic just for a little bit more, but we're going to go on a short break. Okay. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll, we'll kind of maybe go through a case study on how this would work, because I think this could be a good opportunity for some people to, to get better coverage for less price, you know, if given that opportunity. Great. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here today with Darren Matsuda, uh, who is a commercial insurance broker here in town, uh, and we're talking about how to save you on insurance costs. So we'll be right back in about a minute. Bye. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha, we hope you'll tune in. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hoi. Hi, this is Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. Uh, we are back. Um, you caught me by surprise there. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Darren Matsuda is here today. We're, we've been talking a little off camera about uh, some of the stuff that he does in his pastime uh, or in his um, free time uh, rather than just uh, fighting the battles of insurance. But he's quite an accomplished uh, coach. Uh, Darren, can you just tell us a little bit about your coaching and what you do there? Yeah, I'm the head of basketball, varsity basketball coach at Puno School. At Puno Hall. Yeah, we've been, I've been there for about 10 years. Uh, this will be my seventh year 
as the uh, varsity head coach, and wow. I've enjoyed my time there. It's been a it's been a great experience. It's been a it's been a lot of fun, and re it's been very rewarding working with kids and, and helping them become pe better people. I would imagine that sounds like a lot of fun, and you've got uh, yeah. And this is pretty much a year round thing for you. Uh, we have basketball season, but definitely it's a, a, a year-round job. Um, there's administration to deal with uh, the seven teams, and, and we have a, a pretty large basketball tournament where we bring 16 teams in from all over. We have some from uh, California and Oregon, China, wow. Japan, different countries. So it's um, it's a big undertaking, but it's a, it's very rewarding. It's very fun. Now, they come here. Do you ever get to go there? Yes. Uh, every other year, Puno, um, <coughs> we're very fortunate to have Puno School uh, give us the ability to go on a, a, a trip every other year. So wow. we've gone to uh, the mainland uh, every other year, and, and we may do an international trip coming up. Wow, nice. So it, it must keep you pretty busy. And you, you also have a, a family at home, too. you got to spend time with. Oh, so. yes. I have uh, two young kids, <laughs> uh, Reese and Jaden and, and my wife, Lisa. Yeah, you can't yeah. forget the wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So they get to see you once in a while. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well. Uh, before we went on break, we were talking a little bit about doing an insurance review and, and looking at maybe opportunities to cover some risks that may not be covered or to maybe even um, explore how to get coverage for less cost. Mm -hmm. um, can you just walk us through maybe how that process works? If, if there was someone out there that we're going to just give a, a one minute or two minute type of a case study on, how does this work? What, what is the perfect example for you on how this would work? Well, usually, um, first, like I go in and I, I get to learn about your business and see what you do and kind of evaluate what, what, what are the risks that are involved with what you do and, and, and what can be your, your potential liability or potential liability pitfalls. And then I'll go through your policies and see if those are placed correctly and, and make sure the numbers are right. Um, most insurance policies, especially on the liability side, are going to be based on uh, revenues or payroll. And if those are understated or overstated, uh, that could be a big difference in, in how much you're paying or how much you're going to get audited at the end of the year, yep. which is not a pleasant surprise if you get a large audit at the end of the year. No, especially if there's a balance too. <laughs> right. And, and, and then we'll also look on the property side and look at your property values. Maybe you own a building, you know, to make sure that that's up to date um, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that's um, evaluated under using the, right, the correct models or the up-to-date models. Because a lot of times there are programs that we use that will that will be able to evaluate a building. Um, same thing with your, your business property. And then if you're a specialized uh, company, for instance, let's say you're a, a security guard or a, a, an attorney, there's certain coverages or certain companies that will have different coverages that are specialized for what you do. And we want to make sure that you have the best coverage possible and, and, and try to get you the best price. Right. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, my professional liability insurance is pretty standard stuff. It's not anything fancy, but yet you will be able to get better coverage for less cost. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a real surprise. It was a very good surprise to me. And I would imagine there's other people out there that could benefit from that as well. So if they wanted to, you know, maybe talk to you a little bit more about this, how would they get in touch with you? What, do you have a website? Yeah, we have a website. Um, it's our agency website. It's www acwgroup.com acw.group oh acwgroup.com okay.com right. and then uh, my my office number is 535-5080 uh, 5080 all right very good i'll probably ask you that again but for somebody that wanted to just get in touch with you to find out how to you know have this review done and you could probably get this done in just a few hours and so with a few mm -hmm. hours worth of investment uh, they could end up saving some money on this deal. No guarantees, but it's it's a <laughs> yeah. possibility. You know, and it's probably worth uh, a few hours of time. And and to be honest with you, most more often than not, we are able to save uh, people some money. Sometimes not. Sometimes they're not covered correctly, and we'll point that out and 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 you know at least have them advised on what they need. Well, you know, and that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, and, and maybe this is a little bit off topic, but. As a professional in that industry, if you found an area that was a big exposure item, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, naturally you would explain that to the client and they would understand that there's this big hole of, of risk that's not being covered. Um, but it's their choice whether they cover it or not. I mean, there's no rule or law regulation that says they have to have that coverage, right? Yeah, correct. And, and you know, 
a lot of that's a business decision because there's a lot of potential risks out there. But as long as the business owner knows about those risks and is well informed, I think that gives people an informed decision. Well, and there could also be some mitigating uh, circumstances that they might take some steps to maybe reduce that risk a little bit. Yes. Yeah, um, so, yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, what are some of the more current or high profile uh, happenings in the industry right now that maybe people should be aware of that they need to get coverage for? Well, I think right now the, the big thing, and we learned about that today, the big news story today is, is cyber liability. Um, uh, Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo came out this morning, probably the biggest cyber breach uh, in the history with 500 million accounts hacked. That's huge. Yeah, and, and we've been... How in, many people are in the United States? Well, I'm not sure. 370 yeah. million or something, 400, you know, whatever, 300, 400 million. I mean, this is more than the, the entire population of the United States. Yeah, correct. That's amazing. And, you know, just on the ground level, what we've been seeing is we've been seeing a lot of what we call ransomware attacks and, or, ransom, or attempted ransomware attacks. And an example of that is uh, you'll get an email, and, and that email will have an attachment. And this will apply to any business that does any kind of... Uh, any, that runs any of the business over the internet or by email, and they'll open that that attachment and it will embed a virus on their computer, and then and to get rid of that virus, you'll you'll have to call that company up who put the virus on there to take it off and pay the ransom and pay the ransom, and uh, the statistics that just came out, I got an email today. It was that that's, that has been up three hundred percent from two thousand fifteen to two thousand sixteen, you know, and right. we've and we've just seen it. I mean. Uh, we see it almost every week, either by our clients or we've, we've gotten them ourselves. Yeah, and as of I, you know, I've received some of these myself, and fortunately I've not fallen into the trap of opening them up. Mm -hmm. But I heard that the ethics of these hackers are beginning to deteriorate because back when they first started coming out, you'd pay the ransom, you'd get your computer and your files back and everything be okay. Now, some of them are just deleting everything anyways, even when they get paid. And what's worse is that they can get into your address book. And so what we've been seeing is um, you may have your client list or your client address book in your Outlook, for example, um, and then all of everybody that's in your Outlook or your emails, they'll, they'll, they'll be getting an email from you with the same mm -hmm. uh, virus on it. And that's where liability comes into play. Yeah, and I, I've gotten some of those of, of clients. I've had clients mm -hmm. send me an email with something that I wasn't expecting to receive, whether it be a link or an attachment or something. And, you know, I guess because I've seen this so many times, I automatically know. And I wasn't expecting it from, some, from that person. And so I knew it was something had been hacked. Mm -hmm. you know, and I have found that a lot of it comes from you know, you know, the Gmail, the uh, Yahoo Mail, you know, the MSN Hotmail, that kind of stuff. Some of the more, I guess, common uh, services and not so much from some of the uh, individual domain name type, but that, although that does happen. Yeah, and actually that's been, we've been seeing a lot more of that, in fact. Uh, we've, I've gotten some emails from my own clients under their, their own um, email address, mm. and it's, it's a masking email. So the cyber criminals will, will get a hold of their email address and, and it will look like an email from your client, and, but it will actually have a, 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 a yep. phishing a virus on there, yeah. or ransom virus on there. They're getting tricky. I yeah. know that the, um, the IRS just today sent out two or three notices to people that you know, that type of stuff is coming out you know, under the, uh, I guess, the heading of an IRS communication. You know, uh, the, the scams, asking for payment, and, and downloading viruses and that sort of thing. And, and the cyber liability coverage is pretty broad nowadays from a lot of companies. So we're talking about ransomware. There's actually some cyber liability insurance companies that will pay the ransom. And not only does it pay the ransom, it will pay for the rep uh, repair costs. It can pay for the data restoration in case, in case you lose your data and the, and the cost to, to repair the software or hardware, wow. you know. And, and that's, that's really nice coverage um, because ransomware has become a, a big issue now. Um, generally, you know, people think of cyber liability and they think they only need it if they have what uh, PCI, which is, a, you know, protected consumer information, like, like credit cards, um, social security numbers, medical records. And in the past, um, businesses felt that, you know, if, only if I have that information or if I take that information should cyber liability be relevant to me. But 
with the, the new types of cybercrime coming out, it, it's applicable to any business. Well, one of the big targets now are tax return preparers, mm -hmm. you know, and particularly with the smaller independents, uh, where they'll actually hack into the tax software that they're using to get access to all that data, which is virtually everything, mm -hmm. you know, name, social security number, date of birth, everything is in there. Mm. You know, and identity fraud is uh, very high risk. And that's, and that's a big part of the liability coverage, the cyber liability coverage, because in Hawaii we have what's called a Hawaii notification law. So if you were to get uh, breached and, and you had uh, that type of information, um, by law you have to send out a notice to all your clients that, hey, this happened, our, our system got breached, and this is what, um, what type of information got exposed. Um, and if there happens to be a claim or you, you get... Uh, Unfortunately, if you get sued for that, the, the insurance covers not only the, the suit and the defense, but also the notification costs and the identity, the identity monitoring. Because a lot of times what happens with these cases is, especially if it's a, a, a number of individuals, uh, it might settle and uh, part of the settlement is providing the identity theft and the identity uh, monitoring. And the insurance will cover that. Well, and it's number one good to know about this but number two it's good to stay on top of this because it's constantly changing i mean there's this is a very active part of the i guess the, the fraud that's going on across the country um and not only to have the proper coverage but also i think sometimes uh you know the insurance companies you work with provide some guidance on how to mitigate that fraud and have the firewalls and the, the, the other type of security measures in place to prevent it yeah and most a lot of uh, cyber policies now will have risk risk management or risk management manuals and and and, and programs and uh it's good for everybody in your company nowadays to understand what the risks are and the pitfalls are and, and understand how to handle incoming emails, right. how to handle um, those sort of things to, to prevent anything from happening. And that's uh, also a, serv a service that a lot of the insurance companies provide. That's great. And, and I wish we had more time, but the show, is, we've run out of time. Um, you know, we can come back later and we can maybe have a little workshop on, on how to maybe protect yourself and, mm -hmm. and what some of the more common uh, tactics are. But uh, thank you for being on the show oh, Thank today. you for having me. All right, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I've been talking with Darren Matsuda here, and we've been talking about some pretty scary stuff, but I think important uh, to the small business community uh, to protect not only themselves, but also their customers. Uh, but we air live every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30. Uh, hope to, to see you next week. Until then, aloha.